Cody in Logan, West Virginia. See more better here with freeprescriptionlenses.com. But call me Mo, Mo Better, because I'm going to have you seeing Mo Better, looking Mo Better. In your Ray Ban 5277, color 2077, which is the sandblasted black in the 54 eye size. And I'll be cutting transitions extra active gray with Crizal Sapphire. So let me begin. I'm going to go ahead and program your number. You were Secret Agent 1571. I'm going to program that into the computer. So years from now, should you ever need new lenses for this frame, different prescription, or if you want to turn these into sunglass lenses, I will be able to send the lenses right to your home. You will not have to mail this frame back to me. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. I'm going to put that on, on there when I ship to you. Of course, you've got your hard shell Ray-Ban case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, and this is... The Ray-Ban 5277, color 2077, and the 54 eye size with a 17 bridge. It also comes one size smaller in the 52, but this one I'm working with tonight, the 54. So let me pop out your original demo lenses, one of which says Ray-Ban on there. And of course, you're going to get all the manufacturer's original packaging. Place the frame into the tracing element of my blocker and hit start. A little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame first before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account. Flex dollars you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. So, let's move on to the next screen, your pupillary distance. So, here's a good dilemma. Your pupillary distance is 63.5. My computer goes and, well, actually, what would that be? Let's just see. Let's push the limits. There's my calculator. Normally, it's just 31.5 if I was to divide that by 2. 63.5 divided by 2 would be 3175. Let's see if I can actually do this. I am going to hold this button down and it starts at 32.5. What did I say that was? How quickly I forget. 3175. Let's see if I can do that. 31.75. Nope. So, okay. But I do want to raise the optical center up to, let's do 18 because you're not looking through the geometric center of the frame. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you what I'm going to do, but first let me get your lenses prepped. Your right eye is minus three, minus a quarter at 55. I assume this is the right. This one kind of says L on there. Spin the wheel to 55. Put the power drum on minus three. Let's make sure everything is zeroed out. We are good. Put it on minus three. Minus three, minus a quarter at 55. Minus three, minus a quarter at 55. We're going to put the lens in and rotate into the spherical component comes into view. Now this will be, if I am holding the thickest part in my left hand, that means that's the outer side of the lens. Your lenses are thin in the center, thicker at the edges. So I'm going to put three dots on your lenses. Uno, dos, twelve. Wait, I think I mathed wrong. I'm going to mark this one R for a righty. Do the same thing now for the lefty. Turn the axis wheel to 135. Put the power drum on minus three and a quarter. That's French, I'm not sure what that exactly means. Put the lens in, rotate it until the spherical component, come, where, where am I at, three and a quarter? Comes into view, why am I not, there we go, there we go. Make sure that's the left, that is the left. Hang on, something right. Did I do 135? 135. Put the power drum on three and a quarter. Let me rotate this until that comes into view better. I am not doing something right. Hang on, we were getting there. Minus three and a quarter. Pardon me while I go through... Uh, Okay, there we go, there we go. Minus three and a quarter. Minus a quarter, sorry. A quarter cylinder is hard to find. It is hard. You almost like for it to be a whole lot there because it's easier to find. 
I put three dots on your lenses. Let me darken those. Uno, dos, and you pick a number. And this is the left lens. Now say it with me. If I'm, if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I keep laughing at that joke. Why I think it's so funny. I just can't believe that you guys keep watching this and keep laughing with me on that. People email me when they, and they when they're finished with their order, they they even tell me, let me recap what I'd like you to make for me. So. All right, this is a block, and people who watch my video, someone just mentioned in my last video, I didn't say that these are Jenny from the block. These are now Jenny from the block with the big rock from A-Rod, because she got married, or got engaged. So, she got a rock so big her hand, I'm sorry, she doesn't fall to the ground every time she tries to hold it up. That's a big diamond she got. But I need two double-sided adhesive stickers, of which I've got two right here. As they say in the dirty south, which me and Logan are from. Place that on there. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Let me throw that in there. I don't need that anymore. On the back, that silver button is a magnet. It's going to... Where'd that come from? That's something I was working on earlier. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm losing my grip. So, 31 points. So, what I'm going to do, his PD is 63.5. So, if I were to place it in the center, that would be 63. I'm going to move your... PD over inside that little tiny orange box right there. That blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that and inset. So I'm going to move that outward just ever so slightly where it's not about a quarter of a millimeter per lens. So it's not in the middle of that little orange box. And hit the button. The arm comes down, places the block on two of the right lens. We're going to do the now for the same lens that ain't right. I'm going to check something here too. While I'm at it, 135, let's go back to 55. Let's just go back. Of course, that's minus three, minus a quarter, 55. Yep, okay. That's definitely the right lens. Let's do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right. Pull the paper away to make black side sticky. Same PD. I'm going to move that a quarter millimeter over. 31.5, same optical center height, the vertical decentration. And go now the block's going to come down and be on the left lens now this is the edger this is what's going to do all the work as i continue to run my mouth the diamond coated wheel is this wheel on the far left that's what's going to grind your lens material down from this to this this wheel in the center that has that channel that little valley that's what's going to put the v-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays where so it stays inside the bevel of the frame now i'm going to do something differently the reason why I had these made from me is make having me make them is that the corner of his lens, he did not like the fit. So I'm going to manually override this $40,000 computer. First, let's wake it up. Job 1571. 1571. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, I would select that. Or to be determined, some new futuristic space age thing that comes out i'm going to actually instead of automatic i'm going to do this on manual hey see the little hand and i'm not going to polish the edge of the lens i'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens i'm only going to put a light one on the rear concave surface of the lens i'm now going to press the block the jenny from the block onto the lens firmly now the magnet's going to do its job twice it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck and of course, by now, you know, I like to call it the Charles because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Hit the green arrow, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two white styluses. Yes, I'm in a good mood because I just found out I don't have to be on jury duty tomorrow. And it's going around tracing the right side of the lens, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to give me a layout. Root, root, root for the home team. <laughs> That's an email I get from a lab. They give me the, they email me the process of the stuff I have on order. So here's what I want to do. I could use a percentage, and it's telling me the thickness of the lens. So it would be 1.72 millimeters here on one of the thickest. If you look at that number, I'm going to move the bevel around, and you can see how the it changes. Two millimeters, 2.01 on the back. So that's about the same. It's doing everything uniquely, but I want to, now I could use just the base curve of the lens, which this is about a 1.7 base curve, to know where to place the bevel. 
but instead I'm going to use the front base and I'm going to keep everything at one millimeter going all the way around so it'll be a little thicker in the back a little skinnier in the front but that's going to control where that bevel goes in because that was a concern of his that's why you're paying a licensed optician with a forty thousand dollar piece of machinery with software that can do all that so let me hit start that's something you normally don't see in my videos usually I let the computer override and do everything I'm gonna manually inspect this one so the lens is about to drop down onto the cutting wheel you could see that if I would clean my door but uh, the light flickering in the background is water to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel if it ever drops down onto the cutting wheel but as I was mentioning the uh, I got a letter in the mail about four to six weeks ago that I was being summoned to appear for jury duty tomorrow. And I thought I was going to have to miss work and, and all of that, the fun pleasure of being on jury duty. Now, I'm not trying to get out of my civic duty. I did it 20 years ago. I sat on a trial for essentially a drug mule that was coming up from Miami to New York. I'm in North Carolina halfway through but the train stopped in my city and it was a non-smoking train so the guy got off to smoke a cigarette and the police knew it was a, a typical route. They asked him if they could search him and they found about a, a few pounds of heroin in his shoe. In court he said it would look bad when the police asked him if they could search him, he thought it would look bad if he said no. Now, he must have been in his third year of law school because it's going to look worse when they, and he says yes and consents to a search and they find heroin on him. But uh, pretty much not much to do. It was open and shut. They had it on video camera. There wasn't nothing we could say. Nothing we could do. So, but I'm in a good mood because I got out of it. Now, if you notice, I uh, got out of jury duty for tomorrow, that is, because there's a lot of work. I got to get out and videos that need to be made. If you notice, your lens is completely flat around the edges, just like a nickel. If I were to take it out now, it would stand up on the counter. Now it's going to get the bevel placed exactly where I told it to place it. But you did get the polycarbonate lenses. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. These are virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lenses, the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and from flying debris. It's also the same lens material that OSHA requires factory workers wear and there's OSHA approved safety glasses. Now these are not safety glasses. You have to start with the, with the safety frame, which this is a dress frame, but it is the same lens material. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens as well as a premium scratch coating. Now water is spraying onto the lens. It does that for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris. Make sure I didn't hit the polish button. It looks shiny in there. So in just a moment, this lever is going to come out. At the end of that lever is a spinning disc. Some you would find on a Dremel tool or a very fine grit sandpaper that's going to smooth away the back surface of the lens just to remove any sharp edges left over from the cutting cycle. Now you got the Transitions Extra Active, which I'll demonstrate, and you also upgraded to the high-end Crizal Sapphire. There is no nicer of a Crizal anti-glare coating. It has the least amount of reflection, what we in the industry call reflux. Now you can't really see it now because it comes with a powdery coating on the lens from the lab because these lenses are super hydrophobic. Water will bead off here, rain, sweat, any of that, dust. It's, this is the hardest lens to pick up any smudges and it's because of that coating. But because of that, that's why they put that powdery coating on there so it doesn't slip while it's in the chuck. Now, not, not everyone has $40,000 lab equipment that is pressurized to know exactly how much pressure to apply so the lens does not slip. Some people have older equipment, so they put that on there. I don't mind that they do. It's a great way to reinforce it. I trust my Essilor lab with what they do. They look out for me. They don't even realize I'm using the Essilor Edger. I'm using the Nexia brand, my little X Essilor blocker, tracer blocker, my separate unit. They actually have an all-in-one unit where you can trace inside here. But I like having it separate. Why? Because it costs ten thousand dollars more. That's why. Like, no, I didn't like that part of it. But I just feel like it. When you only do one thing, you tend to do it better than anything else. Now, I haven't even tried that other one I spoke of, where everything is built into it. If you go back to my earliest videos, I had an all-in-one unit where I put the. 
frame into the tracer now they don't even measure that now you put the lens into a spot and it will trace the lens so but there are people who send me frames without any demo lenses in there and I would have to make a pattern and I like being able to just trace the frame so I spent ten thousand dollars just so people can mail me their own frames that they buy on eBay with no demo lenses but that's my commitment to excellence so what I did was I moved that bevel very far forwards so we're gonna see how this fits into the frame I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside corner press down with my using my thumbs it snaps in there look at that no pressure I've moved by putting the bevel forward on the lens it moves the lens further back into the frame giving him an incredible cosmetic finish so none of that the, the issues he was having that he sent me pictures of now the only downside to it is it does move the lens further back but his prescription is not far enough to actually have any considerable edge thickness if any at all so let's go ahead and do the left lens. We're going to flip that over to L, press that on there firmly into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby, or tonight I like to call it the Cody. <laughs> and, uh, hit start. Just like before the door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens is going to be traced by what used to be two white styluses. Now they're a little bit of a dirty white. Dirty white's the new white. And uh, let's go around tracing the shape of the left side of the frame. And the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once it's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point giving me a little book report of which now i can go and see how everything is but i'm going to do this as using the front and here's something you don't normally do this is something that i'm going to put on your permanent paperwork which by the way is a gray card for my videos i get beige these are the permanent it has your address your city, your zip code, the date, phone number, email, all this information. I don't include that on there, so I make sure that to respect your privacy, only the first name, the town and state get mentioned. And that's why there is a square here, because I'm going to take this, uh, this sticker off and stick it right on there for permanent keeping. But one thing I will do, I'm going to write on the bottom of here, I do an asterisk, cut on one millimeter front base curve FBC so in red I always use blue ink if you notice I love these same pens anyone out there wants to know what pen I use it is the Uniball Signo 2.7 fine tip I have a box of blue the red is very important pay attention for red so I'm gonna put that there not that this stuff is any less important but this just jumps out to let me know exactly how I cut it one millimeter on the front base curve hit start the cutting wheel starts up the lens is going to drop down in its own time when it is ready there we go cue the lens it's not like we got work to do around here so let's go ahead and take this block off it is no longer needed boy that came off easily that's because of that how hydrophobic this lens is pull the sticker off use my hand approved drying method throw that back in there add that to my sticker collection we're going to come down here place it in over that black dot look I put this on here and now my belt keeps getting snagged I used to have that little piece of rubber so if I have to tighten the screw I can now have a rubber surface to place the frame on and not the hard wooden bench hello is this on so we're going to come back here and actually I've got it on 55 because I wanted to double check the power of the right lens. We're going to put that in there. And we are getting minus 3. And why is that? That's because the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter. Spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. Starts at 0 and goes up in quarter increments from there. 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75 and so on. So you're at minus 3. You're at the 12th rung of a ladder. You are nearsighted. You are wonderfully nearsighted. You could take your glasses off and see your fingerprint. That ship sailed for me. Whenever I want something to be extra blurry up close, I take mine off. But that's because I am a presbyope, a latent presbyope. That means I can't see far away or up close. I can't even hear. What? What was that? What was I saying? Okay, yeah, so 12 steps of farsighted correction. And now once everything, there's a minus sign because with your glasses off, everything is super large. You have superhuman vision up close, but then anything beyond arm's reach, it starts to get blurry. 
If I took one step back, I don't know if you could read the genuine since 1937. Cody, that is, with his glasses off, with his glasses on. Oh, yeah. But, so, but you have one step of astigmatism correction. Now, you barely have any uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look like or the letters P and F. But that's why people get eye fatigue. Over-the-counter reading glasses for presbyopes like me can magnify, but it doesn't clear up the fuzzy edges. Oh, i got to take the recycling out tonight. Come on. Okay. 720. In my hometown, just past 420. This past weekend, I'm referring to April 24th. Why, what 420 were you thinking of? And of course, 85 degrees in my hometown here in North Khaki Lackey. And uh, that fine tune knob, we're going to turn to 55, 55. So let's check the seven, second curvature. And we're getting, if I turn it good enough, minus three and a quarter. That's because we add minus three and a quarter together. And we're at minus three and a quarter in the red. Now your right eye starts at three and a quarter. So you need 13 steps of correction. One more additional step of astigmatism correction in the left eye, which we will get to. And we're going to turn that to the 135 meridian, a straight line. Is 0 to 90 to 180 so for the right eye we turn that fine tune knob for the astigmatism to about 55 for the left eye about 135 now here's the cool thing if you can imagine 0 to 90 halfway in between is 45 degrees for your right eye you're at 55 that's known as an oblique meridian your left eye 135 again if we go halfway between 90 and 180 we get to 135 so you're literally you are known as the oblique meridians so you got that going for you, Cody. <laughs> uh, there is against the rule of stigmatism, with the rule of stigmatism. Of course, that applies to contacts. But you use the oblique meridian formula. So at 45 degrees away from your axis, you're actually getting half that power. Okay, that's enough math. Let's come down here and see if we can get the left lens installed. Now let's just say that you're at one diopter. Half your power away from the meridian would be minus 50 at the oblique meridians as you turn things and get 90 degrees off axis. That's the kind of math you have to learn when you're in school. Or bribe the teachers. One of the two. I won't tell you which one I did. <laughs> I'll let you figure it out. <laughs> now I do want to say this to anyone out there who's struggling. I was the worst student in my class. Now I don't want you to have any less confidence in me. But I worked a full-time job at a very busy practice. There were only two people there, me and the owner. And we were doing about 30 to 35 pair of glasses a day. And that's a lot for two people to sell and make, get insurances, do adjustments for everyone. So I was physically exhausted. And going to school full-time is a full-time job by itself. So you can only imagine, that's like having two full-time jobs. Working full-time, going to school full-time. Oh, there goes that block. Where did it go? down there next to my phone cord. I need to plug that in. Clean up as we go. Take the sticker off. Add that to my sticker collection. Dry that off. Throw that in there. So, But there were people who were stay-at-home moms. There were people who just didn't work. They were full-time students. They made straight A's where I struggled. I mean, I literally struggled. My lab teacher, who in one of my videos, sadly, his 13-year-old daughter who on Friday, biggest concern was her bangs or what blouse to wear with jeans. One of those rare cases, she came down with a flu. And within 24 to 48 hours, she was dead. They tried to do open heart surgery, but there was massive, I don't know what it was, but it just shows us if you have loved ones, love them. Tomorrow is a promise to no one. She was a healthy 13-year-old girl on the soccer team, active, doing lots of stuff. No sickness in the world. She saw her friends at school Friday and left and went home. On Monday, they had made the announcement that she had died. No drive-by shooting, no domestic violence, no car accident. The, you know, the high probability things of how a 13-year-old would die. This was a weird medical thing. You hear about people dying from the flu. It's usually the elderly and the youngest. You never imagine a 13, a very strong, healthy 13-year-old. They donated her eyes to science and with, uh, within, you have four, 72 hours to use the, the organ that is the eye for transplants and two people had their sight restored due to her. So that comforted the parents knowing that uh, 
that's what she would have wanted but my lab teacher the father of this wonderful girl he got into work every day at 8 I was sitting on the tile floor outside his office on my college campus every day I would get there at 730 waiting for him to come in at the time I worked 11 to 7 and he would help tutor me in math and all these formulas day in day out I never would have gotten through school if it wasn't for him fortunately I am stubborn just because there was no way I could afford not to get through school I had to graduate I did not want to live in Research Triangle Park without an education. It is tough being a male without a college diploma here. So I stuck it out. He helped me day in, day out for hours, tutoring me for free because that was his job. And he made it to where I got through school. And he taught the not only lab, but the physics end of it, the, the mathematical, the formulas. As if you get a magnifying glass out and you move it back and forth on your eye, you see how images change. If you look at that O on the Oakley, as glasses move further and away from the face, and some doctor, doctors write the prescription for a certain vertex distance, plastic frames sit in closer, metal frames with nose pads sit a little bit farther out. You have to be able to, to interpret the prescription and change things. And with that math that I learned and the physics, the class was called Theory. And I scored a 98 on my state board exam to this day. It is the highest grade ever recorded on the state board exam. There are eight exams. I had eight sections of the exam. One of them was theory. And again, to this day, I got the highest score. So that's why I'm rambling on to let everyone know if there's anything in life that you are struggling with, stick with it. Don't get discouraged. There are tough times. I can only imagine the tough time that he's having now. But there is, there is a reward if you stick with it. And uh, my classmates who are straight A students, 4.0 averages, graduated top of their class. I didn't even go to graduation because I couldn't afford to take time off from work. I did not walk. I was there to pass the state board exam and that's what I did. But I was the only person from my class of 13 that passed first time around. And... Uh, the highest graduation or the highest passing rate of that state board exam that I have was 19% at the time. One out of my class of 13 passed and that was me. So, guys, stick to it. You know, you complain that some people are stubborn. I'm here to tell you that I personally believe that stubborn is good. Um, I commit myself to something and just stick with it. Anyone out there going through hard times, stick with it. Just stick with it. I know it's hard. I know it hurts. Life is a wonderful opera, except that it hurts. Embrace the hurt and keep going. Because years from now, something else is going to come up that's going to test you, and it's going to hurt even harder than what you thought you had hurt before, and you're going to need to keep going. Keep going. I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but it's just important that... If I can just pass on to the next person. So we're getting minus three and a quarter power for the left eye. Three and a quarter. You have one step of astigmatism correction. Let's check for that. And we end up at 350, exactly halfway between three and four. Dun, dun, dun. Here it comes, 63.5. That's why I decentered the lens just a little bit. So I'm going to turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb on the right lens. And then when we hold it up to the left lens, what does that say? Count it with me. 60, 61, 62, 63, point 0.5, 64, 65. So that is cut perfectly. Let me check the optical center height of... What did I have this at? Let's pull this back up. I think it was 18. 18 it is. In fact, let me write this down. See, I'm stubborn. I stick with things. <laughs> 18... But trust me, you want someone like me in your foxhole. When the, when the going gets tough, I'm right there with you. 18 millimeters to the middle of the center of the frame. Not to the very bottom of the lens, but to the middle of the frame itself. Because again, there is a bevel into the frame. That's where the bottom of the lens is actually at. So we're at 18 there. We are at 18 there. That is cut perfectly. So this is the portion of every video that as I clean your lenses. And here, I'm trying to figure out a place... This is my new $2,000 computer. 
<laughs> that sends everything to the cloud. Now, so if the building were to catch fire, earthquake, whatever, hopefully I would collect on insurance on all this. And then I could remake your glasses with my new equipment because the information that I have here, the 1571, is going to be sent to the cloud, to my computer. I will save all this data, your name, your last name, the frame, the model number, the size, everything about it. Now, the one thing I will do here, these cut on size, so I put a check mark here. Sometimes when I have to take it down smaller, I will notate that. But as I was saying, this purchase is tax free and includes free shipping anywhere in the US. Now, medical devices, which this is in North Carolina, are, are tax exempt. That is why I don't have to charge tax on, on the glasses. Now, if you were to buy these on Amazon, even though you're not supposed to be selling Ray-Bans on Amazon, there are people who do. I don't because I play by the rules. But when you buy glasses online, if you buy them from any state other than North Carolina, you will pay tax. Now, as an example, this frame, the Ray-Ban 5277, and no matter what size, no matter what color, sells for $140. The Transitions Extra Active Gray or Brown or Green sells for $129.99. Crizal Sapphire sells for $139.99. And I try and keep that low. The industry in the Southeast, I get a report from Essilor. And the average price of Crizal Sapphire is $180 to $200. I don't know what it sells for in California and New York. I'm sure it's higher than that, but I charge $139.99 for it for a total of $409.98 for this frame with Transitions Extra Active Gray with Crizal Sapphire. I just want to give them a super thorough cleaning to get that powdery coat off of the lens. And then I'm going to show him how the left lens is fitting in there really well. That's for Cody. Everyone else is invited to watch too, but that's the reason he bought from me because he did not like how the last company forced the lens into the frame, causing the frame to be misshapen. I don't know what the right word for that is, but that's the word I'm using tonight. Unsh unshapen correctly. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, and the other thing, in the picture he sent, when they forced it in there, there was a scratch on the frame right there. I happened to notice in the picture he sent. I didn't want to bring that out because he was unhappy enough with the work that people did. But that's the reason why I put the safety bevel on the back of the lens. If I'm press, as I press the lens, I'm going to get fingerprints all over it again. When I tuck it in there and I push it in, I do not want any sharp edges on the back surface of the lens to come in contact with the frame. And that's probably what happened. The lens was too large. It was a sharp edge and it scratched his frame. You're not going to get that from me attention to detail it's a corny saying that i live by but the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra at the beginning so it takes 20 seconds to put a safety bevel on the lens so it takes me 20 seconds longer to make a pair of glasses but if you make it right it is priceless hopefully cody will come back for years this is the first pair i've made for him i've been i've had my website for five years now and i'm now getting a lot of repeat customers and they're also referring friends and family members. So you do something right, it will come back. The old timer that I apprenticed with years ago taught me that if you just take care of people, money will take care of itself. So I'm not a high volume guy. You can see I've done 1,571 pair of glasses with uh, the new equipment in my new place. And okay, yeah, back to work. Oh, so yeah, so this purchase. <laughs> Is tax free. I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. All right, that's an airplane reference, y'all. I don't sniff glue, at least not on uh, never after eight on uh, on Wednesdays. <laughs> I never sniff glue after eight. Um, so, but yeah, this purchase is tax free. So again, I was going somewhere with that. The frame is one forty. The of course, you get one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses with the purchase of a frame. The Transition Extra Active adds $129.99. The Crizal Sapphire, $139.99 for a total of $409.98. If I were to charge you the 8% sales tax here in North Carolina, I would have to charge $32.79, probably rounding up to $32.80 on top of this purchase. So again, that saved him $32.80 from buying from me versus anyone else out there on the internet but it also includes free shipping anywhere in the u.s and logan west virginia is still in the u.s 
but I'm going to get these in, but uh, when you get these in the mail, Logan, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no different, and I'll show you why I'm part of that 80%, but because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So just stop by your local place and tell them if it's too loose or too tight or crooked. By the way, can you see how those are mounted in there? Much better than the original one. So, but I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stand. So three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I am part of that 80%. When I take mine off and press down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. I'm wearing the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer sunglasses with my Transition Signature 7 and Crizal Sapphire. Crizal Sapphire is the only anti-glare cutting that has that bluish hue to it. So, put these back on so I can see what I'm doing. Flip this over, press down, there is no wobble. I close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly. Ow, it bit me. <laughs> I hate it when I get my little fat fingers stuck in there. It bit me. But make sure they overlap perfectly and that neither one is askew. Check the tension on each spring hinge. That's good. If one was looser or tighter, I would adjust accordingly. So this is what your lenses look like first time. They have, they have not been activated yet. I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light in my little transitions adaptive lenses box. Hit the button. Now, as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Cody and everyone else listening, pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks are exposed to the sun. After that, they will work for years at maximum performance. The only time that transitions won't darken is behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your upholstery to rot or your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day. And that's why transitions don't get dark in a car. Now, Cody's extra active lenses will get 30 to 50% dark behind a windshield where transition signature seven won't. And the all transition lenses are temperature sensitive, meaning they'll get darker when it's 85 degrees and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But uh, remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable, nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. Having said that, the transitions extra active will get darker in hotter weather. It's designed for extra active people who spend extra amounts of time outside, hence the name. So as I keep talking, now, this is the first time they've been darkened. They will keep getting darker and darker. Come on, Cody, we talked about that. Don't you remember? But as I keep talking, they're going to re return back to virtually clear. If you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. On Twitter as freerxlenses. You can email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the Contact Me button on the website. Everyone out there watching... If you like local, independent business people, help come support me. I'm in my fifth year. I'm going strong, but I want to continue to help as many people as I can. Make a pair of glasses for everyone in America. There are certainly large corporate box stores out there. There's one company who happens to own Ray-Ban, and that's okay, but they own 80% of all the optical shops out there. They're going to make their billions. You know that We can bet on that. And it's privately owned. You can't even buy stock in that company. But anyone out there who wants to help out an independent person who's going to try and work harder and do things one at a time to make sure everything fits perfectly, listens to every concern of every patient who comes to me, then you know, keep me in mind for your friends, for your family. And where was I at? I guess that was it. So Cody... And Logan, West Virginia, thank you so much for the purchase of the Ray-Ban 5277, size 54, color 2077, with the Transitions Extra Active and Crizal Sapphire. Now, as you can see, there's the least amount of reflection. That's one thing that Crizal did. The angle of reflection where you see the color of the anti-glare is at 15%, so you have to be at extreme angles before you even begin to see anything. That's why this is the clearest of all the Crizal anti-glare coatings. Well, when the lens is clear, that is. It's still 
very little reflection even when it's dark so you can imagine a dark mirror looking in a storefront window when the lights are off you can see your reflection you cannot see that with these lenses so cody thanks for your purchase thanks for everyone else who's watched and hopefully now you've seen how i bring that love and feeling back to glasses thank you